will come presentation on plant genetic resources conservation and use of germplasm the contents are what is germplasm or genetic stocks why conservation of plant genetic resources method of germplasm conservation it can be ex situ conservation in situ conservation what is cryopreservation of genetic materials what is gene bank and cryobanks use of plant genetic resources in human welfare germplasm the genes required for crop improvement are present in different lines or varieties of the crop species and some useful and often critical genes are contributed by their wild relatives germplasm of a crop may be defined as the sum total of hereditary material such that all the alleles of various genes present in a crop species and its wild relatives germplasm is also termed as genetic resource genetic resources can be broadly grouped into two types depending on the state of their domestication cultivated germplasm and wild germplasm alternatively they may be termed as indigenous or exotic based on their place of origin the germplasm of a crop consists of following five types of materials land races obsolete varieties varieties in cultivation breeding lines and wild form and wild relatives this is a figure of seed collection it's a means of conservation of the germplasm conservation of plant genetic resources number one conservation of plant genetic resources is necessary for food security and agro biodiversity biodiversity provides a valuable source of compounds to the medical food and crop protection industries Number three, genetic diversity provides options to develop through selection and breeding of new and more productive crops which are also resistant to biological and environmental stresses. Number four, maintenance of ecosystem. Germplasm conservation. Germplasm has to be maintained in such a state that minimizes the risk of its loss and allows either its direct planting in the field or its preparation for planting with relative case. This is called germplasm conservation. Germplasm can be conserved either in situ or ex situ. In situ germplasm conservation conservation of germplasm in its natural habitat or in the area where it grows naturally is known as in situ germplasm conservation this is achieved by protecting this area from human interference and such an area is called national park natural park biosphere reserve or gene sanctuary a gene sanctuary is the best located within the center of origin of the crop species concerned preferably covering the micro center within the type center of origin types of in situ conservation biosphere reserve national park on farm conservation wild life sanctuaries now biosphere reserve a biosphere reserve is an area proposed by its habitats ratified by a national committee and 
designated by the UNESCO man, UNESCO's Man and Biosphere program in 1971 which demonstrates innova innovative approaches to living and working in harmony with nature the term biosphere refers to all of the land water and atmosphere that supply life on the earth the word reserve means that is a special area recognized for balancing conservation with sustainable use each biosphere reserve demonstrates practical approaches to balancing conservation and human use of an area. The figure about the biosphere reserve Functions of biosphere Conservation of landscapes, ecosystems, species and genetic erosion Encourage the traditional resource use systems to promote at the local level economic development which is culturally socially and ecologically sustainable to provide support for research monitoring and information exchange related to global issues of conservation national park national park may be defined as an area declared by the state for the purpose of protecting propagating or developing wildlife there in or its natural environment for their scientific educational and recreational value gene sanctuaries a gene sanctuary is an area where plants are conserved it includes both biosphere reserve as well as national park Efforts are also being made to set up gene sanctuaries for banana, sugarcane, rice, and mango. The genetic diversity is sometimes conserved under natural habitat. On-farm conservation On-farm conservation, which defines as a form of in-situ conservation in the place where the demo domesticated and cultivated species have developed for their distinctive properties to maintenance of uh, domesticates and such as land races or local crop varieties in farmers field often referred to as on-farm conservation there is an urgent need to also pay attention to the many economically important wild species that are neither on farm nor in protected areas this cannot conserve the variability found in crop plants for which ex situ conservation the only answer sorry uh, there is a mistake in the slide okay advantages of in situ conservation a gene sanctuary conserves the existing genetic diversity present in the populations and allows evolution to continue as a result new alleles and new gene combinations would with time the risks associated with ex situ conservation are not operative the disadvantages of in situ conservation there are they are the easiest to democrat difficult to establish and very difficult to maintain this cannot conserve the variability found in crop plants for which ex situ conservation the only answer ex situ germplasm conservation Conservation of germplasm away from its natural habitat is called ex situ germplasm conservation. It can be achieved in the following five ways. Seed gene banks, plant or field gene banks, shoot tip gene banks, cell and organ gene banks, and the final is DNA gene banks. Seed gene banks. 
in seed gene banks germplasm accessions are stored as seeds virtually gene banks are seed banks seed conservation is quite easy relatively safe and ordinarily needs of class tin plastic or a combination of these be used for seed storage as proposed by roberts in 1973 seeds are classified into two groups orthodox and recalcitrant on the basis of their storability orthodox seeds of this type can be dried to moisture content of 5% or lower without hearing their viability more than 90% of the plant species produce orthodox seeds and most crop seeds belong to this category such seeds can be easily stored for long periods their longevity increases in response to lower seed moisture and storage temperature Recalcitrant on the basis of their storability. Recalcitrant seed viability of this group of seeds drops drastically if their moisture content is reduced 12 to 30 percent, such that seeds of many forest and fruit trees and of several tropical crops like citrus, cocoa, coffee, rubber, oil palm, mango jackfruit etc such seeds present considerable difficulties in storage therefore germplasm of such plant is conserved by alternative approaches types of seed bank collection the condition for seed bank storage depend mainly on the duration of storage Generally, seed banks collection are classified into three groups base collections, active collections, and working collections. This grouping increases the efficiency of the use of the germplasm collection and determines the level of management required. Base collection this consists of all the excisions present in the germplasm of a crop which are stored at about minus 20 degrees celsius with 5 percent moisture content they are distributed only for regeneration and germination tests are done every 5 to 10 years when the germination of an excision falls below usually of its germination at the start of storage the excision is regenerated for the reason of safety duplicates base collections should be conserved in other germplasm banks as well high quality orthodox seeds can maintain good viability up to 100 years while for crops like peas this period may be as short as years only active collections the excisions in active collections are stored at temperatures below 15 degrees celsius and seed moisture is kept at 5%. The storage is for medium duration such as 10 to 15 years. These collections are used for evaluation, multiplication and distribution of the excisions. Active collections are usually maintained by multiplying the seeds of their own excisions but from time to time collection material should be used for regeneration of active collections to prevent any appreciable shift in the genetic makeup of the excisions working collections the excisions being actively used in crop improvement program constitute the working collection seeds of these excisions are stored for three to five years at below 16 degrees celsius and usually about 10 percent moisture these collections are maintained by the breeders who will be using them Field gene banks. Essentially, a field or plant gene bank is an orchard or a field in which excisions or fruit trees or vegetatively propagated crops are grown and maintained. Field banks suffer from the following serious limitations and they are they require large land area, are established and maintained, and are prone to damage from disease and insect attacks, natural disasters and human errors in handling. 
cell and organ gene banks a germplasm collection based on cryopreserved embryonic cell culture shoot tips or somatic or zygotic embryos may be called cell or organ bank the techniques for cryopreservation of plant cells and tissues are being rapidly refined and used used for germplasm conservation such as for potato in germany shoot tip gene banks in such gene banks germplasm is conserved as slow growth culture of shoot tips and nodal segments their regeneration consists of subculturing the cultures which may be done every six months to three years this approach offers the following chief merits of for the germplasms of vegetatively propagated crops and tree species number one genotype of the excisions can be conserved indefinitely free from disease and pests they can be used for crops which produce no seed or recalcitrant seeds subculture become necessary only after relatively long periods regeneration such as subculturing requires a comparatively very short time in addition cuttings bulbs and tubers can be maintained under controlled humidity and temperature conditions however this approach is approach is practical for short and medium term uh, storage and it should used in conjunction with a field gene bank dna banks in this bank dna segments from the genome of the germplasm excisions are maintained as cosmid clones phase lysates or pure dna these dna segments can be evaluated and the desired ones may be used to produce transgenic plants this approach is applicable to the conservation of genetic materials of already extinct species since dna since DNA extracted from well-preserved herbarium specimens can often be cloned. However, it is very expensive and highly sophisticated. Advantages of ex situ conservation. It is possible to preserve entire genetic diversity of crop species at one place less interaction with the environment so less chance to lose loss of genetic resources ex situ conservation remove targets from their natural habitats and conserve them in a seed bank botanical garden zoo aquarium etc the ex situ population may represent only a limited portion of the gene pool of the species handling germplasm is easy small propagules stored in less space no need to generate plants every season this is a cheap method of germplasm conservation these advantages of ex situ conservation problems with the maintenance of the recalcitrant and vegetatively reproducible species Monitoring of viability frequently is essential in seed gene banks. High cost of maintenance and little benefit sharing. Only limited portion of the viability is collected and maintained. Endangered habitats may be fragmented, so the area may not be large enough to ensure the survival of these species. Genetic diversity may have already been dramatically decreased. And the final one, conditions that threaten the organisms in the area may still be present such as disease or interspecific competition. Now, cryopreservation of genetic materials. 
cry preservation literally mean in the frozen state the principle involved in cry preservation to bring the plant cells and tissue cultures to a zero metabolism or non dividing state by reducing the temperature in the presence of cryoprotectants cryopreservation broadly means the storage of germplasm at very low temperature such as over solid carbon dioxide low temperature in refrigerators in liquid nitrogen among these the most commonly used cryopreservation is by employing liquid nitrogen at the temperature of liquid nitrogen is minus 196 degrees celsius cryopreservation has been successfully applied for germplasm conservation like species such that um, rice wheat peanut sugarcane coconut use of germplasm increasing genetic enhancement and base broadening broadening effects promoting sustainable agriculture through diversification of crop production and broader diversity in crops promoting development and commercialization under utilized crops and species supporting seed production and distribution developing new markets for local varieties and diversity rich product institution and capacity building building store strong building strong national programs promoting network for plant genetic resources for food and agriculture developing monitoring and early warning system for loss of plant genetic resource for food and agriculture expanding and improving education and training promising public awareness of the value of plant genetic resources for food and agriculture conservation and use used as a variety as a parent in the hybridization and also used to transfer resistance to biotic and abiotic stresses and thank you for listening me hope you like it and forgive my mistakes in this side presentations uh, and subscribe me please uh, to get more and more slide presentation on botany thank you Yeah.